Today I'd like to talk to you about gasket infiltration, one of our product modules here at Beck Arnley. And uh, what we'll do is we'll cover a couple of items on the engine side, and we'll cover a couple hard parts, a couple gaskets, and then we'll talk about filtration. Just want to try to give you an idea on what we go through in order to put a product into the box at Beck Arnley. One of the things I'm going to stress to you would be application specific sourcing, that by which we call it one part number at a time, sourcing through our, our vendor base, which has over 800 vendors in it. So we have a lot of options to go out and make sure that we get the right part to fix the customer's car. The other thing I want to do is also talk about some things that we might do differently in order to help the technician, what we would call enhancements. And finally, those things that come in the back door called alleged effectives or warranties or comebacks. What can we do to stop those from happening? We look at that as well in the product department here at Beck Arnley because it's all very critical in order to make sure that we give you the right part to fix the car and uh, make sure it doesn't come back because of a defective part. With that, at the uh, office in Smyrna, Tennessee, we have a OVM file. It's our sample parts library, OVM, Original Vendor and Manufacturer File. It's where we keep our samples. We also keep some of our competitor samples in there as well. We always like to see what our competitor's up to. We'll go out and buy some stuff, compare to ours, make sure that we've got the upper hand, make sure that we're good. Also, when it comes to application-specific sourcing, it's got to be 3F, form, fit, function and performance. Let's add performance to that as well. So with that in mind, I've got a timing belt tensioner. There are two tags on here because everything in our sample parts library is tagged. Here's the OE tag. It's the OE sample. So we purchased the OE sample. Happens to fit a Honda application. So what we'll do when we get this in, we will look for any markings. Anything that can tell us where we need to start looking to make sure that we can get this identical item to put in the Beck Arnley box. In this case, we know who makes the bearing. We don't necessarily know who makes this hardware bracket, but we have a relationship built with the bearing manufacturer that we can go to them and ask them who they're supplying the bearing to in order to attach this hardware. We have an office in Japan. We contact him either through email or telephone. And, and tell him, give him the OE number, give him the application, ask him to go talk to the vendor for us because it's always good to have feet on the street and see if they can help us identify where we can get this item from. Because this has two tags, I've got the OE sample and I've got the vendor, the approved vendor sample, so I know that I'm getting the exact same part that the original equipment or the service side of the business is getting for Honda. So when I open up the Beck Arnley box and pull out the bearing, we're talking about an identical match throughout. So that way we are able to provide to the technician, to the shop owner, and the installer base the part that's required per that vehicle. And again, it's done at a part number at a time level, application specific. So we then, if we're talking about timing belt tensioners, let's talk about timing belts. We do the exact same thing with timing belts that we do with tensioners. We buy the original equipment part. We get the tag, we tag it as a sample. On the back of this tag, you'll see it says 113 teeth. We count every belt, all applications, because we got to make sure it's the right belt. The other thing that we'll do is we'll check out the nomenclature on the belt, the, the teeth design. Is it square? Is it round? Whatever the design might be. So that way we can actually, when we think about where we want to go source this from, that we get the exact, we can give them all the dimensions, all the critical components, all the critical measurements, and we can then source the belt to match original equipment as it was intended to be. Interesting things happen to us on timing belts from the standpoint of because they're replaced at 60 or 90,000 miles, whatever the case may be, we do get some phone calls from installers that sit there and go, you know, I'm not too sure about whether or not I got the right belt. He says, I took square teeth off, a, off the vehicle and I'm putting round back on. Well, our very first question to any question like that is be, how many miles are on the car? Because are we talking about the first replacement, second replacement, even third? Because we do see imports lasting a long time. In this particular instance on this car, that this, this installer that called me, 130,000 miles. So it's safe to say it was a second repair. The first repair, they didn't put the right belt on. 
they go, they put on an, a one that had square teeth and not round. But when we go back with the becker only part, they're going to get round the way it should be. The other thing with timing belts too, with the double overhead cam engines, timing marks, very important to the installer. They will have the timing marks on them. And we do recognize all timing marks that are necessary per original equipment to make sure that it can be installed properly, thus timed properly. We do offer a set of uh, timing belt kits. In the kits will be all the necessary components, the tensioners, the, uh, any pulleys, bearings, whatever is necessary. And if it's a hydraulic tensioner required on that engine, we will put the hydraulic tensioner in the box. If it's got one belt, we'll put the one belt. If it's got two belts, we'll put two in this box because we want to make sure that it's a complete repair. This application in particular has an application where there are timing cover gaskets. We'll include those as well. Everything that's needed to make the repair. A little thing that we do a little bit extra. We put a timing belt reminder sticker. We exampled a lot of these stickers because of the glue. We had to make sure the glue withstands the underhood temperatures for a couple of years. So in that case, we had to make sure it was a good, hard, fast glue that stayed a long time. That way, let's say the vehicle owner sold their car. Well, the next one will now know, next vehicle owner will now know when the timing belt was replaced and when it needs to be done again. Just something to help the consumer. Well, you can also help the installer too because they can put their name right on there as well so they know where the repair was done so they could do it again. This is a timing belt cover. In this particular instance, we actually have seen where this cover is actually has the gaskets that are actually embedded. They're integrally molded into the cover. So you can actually see the rubber can't buy the cover separately. I'm sorry, you can buy the cover separately. You can't buy the gasket separately. So thus, we'll offer you the cover. And we're also working on trying to get some more coverage with these covers because we do know that over time, wear and tear, heat, they get deformed, they don't fit properly, or they get rubbed by other belts, and thus they lose all property. So we are looking for more. But on those applications where this gasket is actually part of it, we're going to give you some coverage on that. This is 038 series. It's the exact same series of numbers for the timing gaskets. So 038 being timing gaskets. So we put the covers in with those as well. Speaking of belts, these are 026s. Tensioners. Tensioners are going to be 024. Okay, so we actually do have a, a series. It's done by category. 024 is going to be your timing tensioners, and 026 be your belts. 029 is going to be the timing kit that I just showed you a moment ago. So 029 will be the part number for a kit. And that way, and in fact, what we'll do on a kit is we will actually list the part number and we'll tell you the part numbers that are tied to the kit. In this particular instance, this kit that has an 026 timing belt, 026 timing belt, 024 tensioner, 024 balance shaft tensioner, and then we also got an 038 gasket cover. So we actually put the part numbers in there as well. If you were to have to buy them individually from us, we do sell them individually as well. But the bill of material will actually list the contents of what's inside. So let's move into gaskets. This is a valve cover gasket that we have. It's got our spark plug tube seals and it's got our grommets. The nice thing about this packaging though is the fact that it's clear, plastic wrap, completely sealed, nothing's going to be lost. The other thing too is, you look it up, the counter person looks it up, goes, grabs it off the shelves, comes back, show the customer, everything is visible. There isn't anything hidden. They don't have to open up any boxes, they know what they're getting, they can check the configuration. They know that they're going to get four spark plug tube seals and they're going to get grommets. So I went to the Honda dealer because this actually fits a 1.8 liter. I went to the Honda dealer and I bought the gasket. And because as I talked about earlier, our OVM file, got to have the vendor sample as well as the OE sample. I got the OE sample. In this particular instance, made in China. So we have a global economy today. The other thing was, I had to ask the counter person at the dealer if they had spark plug tube seals. No, 
don't stock those. How about grommets? No, don't stock those either. So, when you get back from a visit like that, it just validates the fact that if our installer base wants to go back to a dealership, we've got op we have reasons why they shouldn't. We're going to give them everything in one kit. Just makes it a lot easier, a lot cleaner, and they only have to make one stop, one package, and they can change that valve cover gasket and do it the right way. So I checked our competitor. They've got a gasket. They use the material that they use. It's their material. And so that matches. And they also have the tube seal, um, the spark plug tube seals. And they give you the four tube seals, but they don't give you any grommets. Grommets leak. They're made of rubber, just like the other parts are. Again, why, grommets are cheap. Why take that shortcut? Let's do the job right. Let's make sure there aren't any comebacks because of a small oil leak on a grommet. That's why we put it together the way we do. So the other evening, I had the opportunity to work on a four-point or a, a Toyota 4Runner six-cylinder. And this is our valve cover gasket set for that particular application. Grommets, spark plug tube seals, gaskets. Another thing, too, our catalog will tell you it's a valve cover gasket set. And then we'll footnote the fact that it's set, that includes spark plug tube seals and grommets. There are some vehicles that do not have grommets, in which case we will put the spark plug tube seals in there. But we will footnote it in the catalog so that the counterperson can tell the customer how it's going to come to them. So in this particular case, we've got a six cylinder, we've got the tube seals, we've got the grommets, we've got the gaskets, opened up the hood, found out that we had to take the plentum off to uh, replace the gasket on one side. So got back in the car, came back to Beck Arnley, looked them up, got the plenum gaskets, went back home, uh, went back and, and finished the repair. These items are already in the Beck Arnley line. Why I'm showing you this is the fact that what we're considering now doing is adding two plenum gaskets to this valve cover gasket set in order to make it a complete repair seal kit. And we'll call it something of that nature though because we don't want to change this item because again we've been selling it this way for years. We just want to make it better. So, and again what I'm saying is just because these are already in the line doesn't mean we won't make a change if we see a way to make it better. Additional gaskets. Head gasket, you'll notice it's light blue because I showed you dark blue on a plenum gasket and I showed you brown on a valve cover gasket and I'm showing you light blue on a head gasket and I'm showing you red on oil pan. This oil pan is a very interesting oil pan because typically that doesn't look like an oil pan. It actually looks like a valve cover gasket. It's rubber, it's got beads on it, it's actually what fits on a Civic. Got a phone call from a customer and they go, I think you got this packaged wrong. And we go, why? And well, because it looks like a valve cover gasket. All the, the configuration, the looks, the material says valve cover. I said, okay, hold on. Just so happens this customer had come to visit us and we had shown him our sample parts library. Again, it's open to, we'll show everybody our sample parts library. It's what validates our program. So he said to me, he says, you got that OE sample? I said, absolutely do. Took, went out, grabbed it, and I called him back and I said, you know, you're safe. You're ready to go. That is the part that you need to fix that oil pan on that application. Trust me. And he did and called me back and he said, thanks. Exactly what we needed. But it's that file, that sample parts file that validated and gave our customer the confidence to sell it to their customer.